to my channel. Today I would like to talk about a very important concept in change management, which is called design thinking. And to illustrate what design thinking is all about, let me tell you a little story. A truck driver is driving on the highway and because he was not too careful about the height of his truck, he got stuck under a bridge. He could not go forward, he could not go backwards. He created quite a traffic jam, as you can imagine. Now, everybody tried to help him. So they were engineers, they were doctors, they were from any sort of professional activities. And each person was trying to provide a solution based on his own professional expertise. And still, the truck was pretty much stuck under the bridge and nothing could really happen. The uh, situation didn't improve. Up until the moment where a little kid, a little boy, approached the truck driver and very innocently said, what about you deflate your tires and maybe you'll be able to drive a little bit further than the bridge. And obviously they did and the truck was able to get unstuck and drive away. Now you see how this illustrates the idea that sometimes the best solutions are not the solutions from experts. They're not the solutions that we sort of expect in a, in a normal environment. Sometimes they come from very unexpected sources. Now, design thinking is a combination of a philosophy and a set of tools with the intent of solving problems creatively. So it's all about being creative in how we address <coughs> problems. Now, in addition to that, and, and to show you, for example, the, 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 one of the tools that is used is the five whys. Now, you pretty much have heard about this uh, tool in the past, I believe. It's very well known. The, the five whys tool is, well, when you have a statement, ask why first time. When you're provided with a response, ask why a second time. And you do that five times. And it's proven that if you apply this tool, you will go very deep into finding the origin of the problem and hopefully finding the solution to the problem. So this is one of the tools that is usually used in design thinking. Now, design thinking is about understanding the user. It's about challenging assumptions and therefore redefining problems. And what I particularly like about the design thinking uh, uh, concept or process is because it focuses very much on the human element. It is a very human-centered approach. Now, the design thinking process involves five steps. The first step is about empathy. This is when you will gather and understand a specific situation from your customer's point of view. Not from your perspective, but again, putting yourself in the shoes of your customer, understanding what they go through, what are the different issues, and so on and so forth. The step number two is about defining or definition. And this is what, where you're going to be thinking about what are the user's needs? What are their problems? What are their challenges? So that step obviously comes after the empathy and it's allowed by the fact that you went through the empathy step. The first step is about ideation. Ideation is when you start brainstorming, is when you develop solutions, you develop ideas. And this is why the design thinking methodology is very interesting because in order to have this brainstorming process, it is very important to have people from all different backgrounds, a little bit like in that truck stuck under the bridge situation. People that are experts in one area, people that are experts in another area, people that are not experts into any of the areas that you're addressing. Because a brainstorming process will be the creative aspect of the design thinking. The fourth step of design thinking is prototype. This is where you basically build a simple, testable prototype. Something that can be used or 
evaluated by your client. The fifth step and the last step in that process is the, test, the testing. Obviously, you put the prototype on the market and you see how it works. And obviously, this is an iterative process. The, the design thinking process is very iterative. Those five steps will go back in a circle. Once you've tested, you learn from the mistakes, you go back to step number two, defining again, step number three, and so on and so forth. So we see that the design thinking process is very different from the business model that we usually apply, which is I have an expertise, I have a technology, I can sell that technology. Here it's the reverse system. It's really with the empathy of understanding what your clients need and with the human element of trying to really be as broad as possible in how you approach the problem. Now, Vitreviews Partners Group has developed an expertise in design thinking and we look forward to helping you with any of these issues and we welcome you to, to contact us if you wish to learn a little bit more about design thinking process. Now, if you like that video, click on the like button and subscribe to my channel and I look forward to seeing you again very soon. Thank you.